Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. Um, I'm going to stamp out quite a few images that really aren't stampscapes, but uh, just some of the type of imagery that's uh, in my own collection, collected over the years, that I've really enjoyed uh, incorporating in with my own line of stamps. Uh, some of these are available, and some of them probably aren't at this point in time. I've collected these stamps probably going back 20 years now. This is a moon from Rubber Stamps of America, located in Vermont. Uh, it used to be a company that I'd see a lot of ads for all the time back in the day. And uh, I don't know, they, they, they might still be out there. Uh, check them out online if they are. Um, one of the real early pioneering companies out there. Um, the scene I'm going to do, I'm going to focus around kind of like the science of uh, study of insects. I see that as a theme here. Here's this little hand with tweezers. I'll get into the names of these companies when I stamp them out, but this one is Brain Face, that's what it says, by Leavenworth Jackson, and I uh, always love that company. Uh, collection of beautifully curated uh, designs, um, a lot of uh, old engravings, tight detail, and this stamp right here I probably bought from the old Stampa Barbara uh, store. I used to go in there and you would see just about everything in one store as far as uh, rubber stamp companies went. He used to basically carry the entire industry, or at least most of the most popular designs from every company. Um, Leavenworth Jackson, uh, um, I think a lot of this stuff is unmounted, but she used to mount it for, uh, for him. Oh, uh, let's see. Tweezers. All right, now this company, I don't know if these images are still available somewhere else, but it's by Alice in Rubberland. Uh, a company that's really not around anymore. And hasn't been for... maybe 15 years now or so. They used to have a group, uh, bunch of really cool designs. Used to see them at the shows. Okay, let me see if I can get this. Uh, I think I'm, I'll have the tweezers kind of on the moon. detail in these old engravings. Uh, sometimes it surprises me at just how much detail you can get in a rubber stamp impression, you know, by the time you take artwork and you have it made into a typically a magnesium plate and then you have a mold made from that plate and then you're pressing rubber and then you get it to a rubber stamp form, and then you have someone inking it up and making another impression. You're talking about a lot of generations away from that original artwork, which in most cases aren't isn't really a super great artwork to begin with, because they're just reproductions in a book. Uh, but it reads pretty well. Um, I had kind of found I was going to do something with this uh, compass right here and this universal adapter. So I kind of measured off um, uh, the center point. And now I stamp that moon over it and I can't see what that center is anymore. Let's see here. This is a it's two and three quarter inch. 
We're measuring down two and three quarters. Okay, I kind of see it now. There's a little tiny blue dot that I put there. And... Okay, I almost lost it again. Let me point in there, okay? Because that's where I'm going to use my uh, compass and uh, create a, these concentric circles around. And the other one is right here. I better kind of make a little indentation with that. And you'll see what I'm going to get at when I, when I get to it. Okay, uh, three images so far. Um, these three uh, moths, was maybe a dragonfly or damselfly or something like that, um, by, are by 100 Proof Press. Now they still, they, they are still around, and uh, that's one of my favorite um, rubber stamp companies. A lot of really cool uh, engraved pieces. Okay. Engraved imagery. And let's see here. Let me go about like that. About like so. These bugs kind of circling around there. Um wonder if it maybe couldn't use one more here or something like this. I don't want that. Too similar. Well, it's the same one, but I was just going to change the uh, the angle, but uh, I don't think so in this case. Okay. Now let's bring in some kind of unifying element um, for all these one, two, three, four, five, six different images. Okay. Now I always kind of talk about this cloud cumulus as being. Um, a pretty universal image, and that's the case here. I'm trying to think of what color I want to stamp it out in. I'm trying to think of the entire color scheme, actually. Maybe I'll do it in emerald green tones, kind of, you know, to represent growth, maybe. Um, I also just like the color itself. Um, uh, let's try that. I'm trying to think of which, which value to do it in. Maybe maybe the jungle green. Okay, let's do that. I basically just want to go with at least a medium tone. I'm thinking here. Um, there's going to be a lot of impressions of this blotting off the perimeter and a good portion, maybe a half inch into the top, where it's going to be kind of a, towards the center of the scene. It's going to go from light to dark. All right, so I, I want some nice light values of it in that area, okay. All right. If you're wondering, oh, don't drop your stamp. I just did. Um, if you're wondering, I I mean, I could mask these off, but I don't really feel like I need to. I feel comfortable enough just kind of stamping around them. Now, that hand, I don't really feel too comfortable stamping around, so, uh, or stamping over, so I'm going to mask it off like so and come into it like this as always, kind of under mask, you know, so that if you do have some of that going into that thumb or hand, I think that's better than having a big white line in between the cloud and the hand. All right. A 
on this side it was kind of the hand was dark so I didn't feel I needed to mask it off much. Okay, maybe right here. Let's go like that like so. Changing the angle. Just kind of avoiding the face a little bit, you know. I might be going into it a quarter inch or so. Okay. All right, so we have something. It's what I kind of refer to as a needle and thread in terms of a uh, blending of imagery together. You have something common going through everything. The other things are, you know, this is a common texture and image running throughout the uh, scene. Um, we'll be using similar colors and textures in terms of you know, little embellishments and also do something with the compass here and the universal adapter using the gel pens. Okay, let's start off here. Adjust your pads, have them going from light to dark. These two are about the same value, so it doesn't matter which one comes first. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to have this yellow in here. I don't know. Maybe I'll do something like this. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's just start off. Okay, now I need to start off with a very light color. Now what I was thinking about with this pale orange, I was thinking this might just be too narrow of a range of tones, hue. It's all green, but there are different types of green, but it might be too narrow for me, so I was thinking about going into the uh, kind of the orangish tones just for a little bit of a change. Uh, to extend the uh, the color range of the scene slightly, just by going into a very light version of an orangish hue. And what it'll look like in the end, I don't know, because we have all these other colors that will come over the top of it. All right, now I'm kind of retaining some of the, the white of some of the cloud areas. Which ones you do that with, it doesn't really matter. Just retain some of them, some of that area, so you have nice reflected light uh, coming at you, if that's kind of what you're going after. I think having a nice value range in a scene can really um, enhance the, uh, the visual uh, richness potentially of whatever you're doing, you know, having some kind of interesting lighting scheme. Okay. Now that was a Peach Bellini Adirondack Lights color. It's very slippery. It's very thick ink. Um, and it blends beautifully. Don't just color everything, but wherever you put this down, go back and add a little bit more just to kind of lubricate the page a little bit, you know? It's kind of penetrating or laying on the surface of the card stock, the card stock, the glossy card stock. But build it up a little bit so that you have, a, you know, you've kind of lubricated the page somewhat. All right, now this is a Marvy. It's yellow green 52. 
adding this in. This would be a beautiful color scheme for grass as well. You know, if you're doing a meadow, it's always it ends up it's the same thing. It just depends on what you're stamping it around. Okay, in a meadow like this one from a few lessons ago, I've oscillated the lights and darks across the body of uh, grass. This one I'm just doing the same thing over clouds. Okay, it's the exact same process. Kind of color application, the retention of light, uh, the defining of shadows. All right, it's and it doesn't matter which ones, what areas you kind of retain lightness with, okay? It's, there's nothing to say that, uh, you know, that cloud right there should be light and that one should be dark, you know what I mean? Just whatever ones you end up picking or what it, whatever area the, uh, you know, the wand doesn't go to, you can say, just kind of let it, uh, let it develop. And see how that color is? I mean, I've gone to yellow green to this pale orange right here. Actually, this is uh, yeah, yellow green. It's just a little bit darker than without it. So I'm just going up nice and, you know, taking it in slow, methodical increments. And there's a lot of control over it that way. So I'm controlling my application process through you know, small uh, baby steps in terms of the color building process. And I've also controlled the, uh, the application process through um, the density of ink. Just start off with something thick and then over the top of it, go with something, you know, probably thinner, you know, like a Marvy. Um, you don't want to go with too many things that are too thick, otherwise you're just going to be applying and applying and applying and it just doesn't stick to the card. It's because it's so... too many of the colors are, are too thick, okay? Okay, that was the pale green. Now, you know what I'm thinking already. I am thinking that I need something brighter. This would provide it right here. It's a light green, but I think it's going to be limiting a little bit in terms of the, uh, the intensity of a scene. So I think I am going to go with something really a lot brighter as a sub color, and that's yellow. Okay, now yellow is, of course, related to green. Yellow and blue make green, okay? So you can go from some, that to that, you know, or from this to this, all right? I want there to be... I want the light to be a little bit more... kind of explosive in this scene. I want it to be really, I want the saturations to be bright. You know, I want this scene to be lively. Um, I don't always want that. If I want to go for something, you know, the mood, I want to be a little bit more mellow and uh, kind of subdued. You know, I might want, I might not want these super bright uh, intensities. So, but in this case I do. So, let's get this yellow down here. It might not necessarily read as yellow by the time I blend more colors over the top of it. Um, but it'll have that subcoat, sublayering intensity going. Okay, this is the, the light green.
working the perimeter, especially I want my perimeter to be fairly dark to contain the composition. And this scene, like all, needs containment. There's nothing on the outside edge here, you know, in terms of other imagery. At this point in time, I'm going to add some more other, other things in here. Um, but, uh, but right now, it's kind of wide open. Uh, compositionally, it's it's just not full. It's uh, it needs more uh, of something. It needs the composition needs weight to me. I think uh, visual weight. It's too airy right now. Okay, uh, that was jungle green, same color that I stamped out the clouds in. Now let's go with a fairly dark green, just the basic number four from RV. All right, that's where it really starts to, uh, you know, start getting a lot darker. Um, in this one, this one value. Be careful when you get to your darker tones. Don't take them into the scene quite as fast. The paper isn't being as absorbent because it's coated with so much ink. You get the pulp of the page starting to absorb moisture through the first several colors. So you have this darker color that's kind of remaining on the surface a little bit longer. It's not being absorbed into the paper and it's a darker color to begin with, so you don't want to drag it across in the drier areas right here and get a big, you know, mark like that. So in other words, just stay on the edge for a lot longer. You can dab it around like this too, and that kind of builds up a darker tone. Sometimes if you drag, you're pulling off. So just get a feel for uh, how fast your colors are kind of setting up and uh, you know, applying to the page. I'm looking at this right here, and I can see uh, where the ink is actually kind of, um, it's beaded up on the uh, surface of the page a little bit, uh, which is fine. But be careful if you drag across there, because you'll get this big streak. You know, and if that happens, you just blend it back out again. But, you know, it just means you don't have to do it again. some of the uh, shapes of the clouds in these areas, but for the most part, it's very, very dark. Um, let's see, I think I need to go with a darker tone perimeter cloud structure, but um, I was thinking, I don't think I want to do it in black. A bottle green might work. But I don't know if that'll be dark enough. I was thinking about dark brown. Okay. Let's see what that what will look like. Okay. Billowing clouds facing towards the light is coming from above, All right? In these clouds. I'm going to blot off the edge, you know, right in around here, because I don't want that darker shape right there uh, in this case. All right, and in the darker areas, make your impression hold. There's an awful lot of ink on the page already. You just have to kind of let the ink transfer. Okay, and you get that 
impression of it right here. You can see on the other side where it's kind of been a little bit more obscured with all the uh, tone that we've laid over the top ink. So we'll do the same thing right here and around in the darker areas. And that brown worked out pretty good, I think. It doesn't read as brown because we're stamping it over, you know, many uh, green values. So it just becomes, you know, kind of a darker hue. Let me see if I can get two impressions out of it. Eh, a little bit. Okay. So you can see it from one side to the next. This side seems a little bit more. Uh, varied you know, in terms of um, spatial visual, spatial depth having something kind of darker clouds closer to you and that goes back into the distance so the lighter values kind of recede and the darker ones come towards you. So we're creating depth uh, with the cloud uh, with itself, lighter clouds and darker clouds. Okay. And I like the way that's going. I'm going to add a few more here. One more. Okay. Okay, so we have a nice deep sky there, I think. Um, made possible with the, uh, the cloud. Let's bring in some of that dark brown tone. I still have some of the green on here, so and this brown pad is a little bit dry, so it's not absorbing too much brown on here, you know, immediately. But I'm just going back in here and kind of smoothing and blending out the darker clouds now. take your perimeter, the brighter or lighter the lights will seem by contrast. Since we're not working with, you know, real light in the scene, I mean, there's not, it's not like a computer monitor where light is coming out of there, so everything is kind of, uh, you know, just the illusion of light. create the, the illusion of light through the use of shadow or darkness. Let's see here. Um, 
I just noticed I had a bottle green here. Let me try that here. Four corners. Super juicy too. All right. Um, I'm looking for my black stamp pad. Where did it go? Okay. I'm going to add in some foreground here, and I think I have the perfect thing for that. This is the Twisting Leaves stamp. And I'm just going to have it coming in around the head at the base. Maybe I'll do another impression or two at the side of it, depending on how this looks. Maybe uh, the plants, you know, how they grow towards the light. And by the way, I had a moon there. Of the sun, because I saw these moths as being kind of you know, that situation where you get moths kind of going, you know, coming out at night time. Um, this is creating depth um, by having something large, visual depth. Um, it's also kind of framing the scene, you know, in terms of compositionally by having something kind of dark on the perimeter. And look how much have, you know, this little face kind of pops out by having something real dark and solid right next to it. Okay. And why not? I'm gonna go in and uh, have it coming from above as well. It could be an overhanging uh, tree limb or something. Okay. Trying to think of what I want to do now. I'm looking at this, trying to assess. I think the objects can use um, a little bit more fleshing out. And I think I'll do that with the alcohol pens. Okay, now this is a moon. I'm thinking about bringing some cool blues into it. Very pale blue. This one's a little bit darker. Maybe hit the moon kind of here and there in the shadows. This darker version blue. And I'll go back in with the light one and blend that out. You can do that on glossy cardstock. You can kind of push the colors around a little bit. Maybe we can put a little bit of that blue on some of these wings of these moths. And let's see, on 
what is it? Brain face. I think the name of this stamp. Why not bring some of this cool light? Into the figure where blue overlaps. Um, yellow, it'll for it'll have a greenish tinge to it. Okay. Kind of interesting image. It's probably some biomedical illustration. Um, I don't see this like some kind of gruesome thing, even though it's like a cross section. I see this more you know, this little figures kind of being enlightened. You know, it's expansion of knowledge and whatnot through study. And the face seems very serene. Uh, this is kind of a flesh, you know, peachy color. All right. Now, uh, the fun begins. Not that the rest hasn't been fun, but where it really gets fun for me. Okay, now this is a compass, um, a bow compass, and it has what they call a breakable leg, okay? Some compasses, it's just one straight, you know, piece of uh, metal that goes down here. This one happens to have, hold on a second, this one happens to have this area right here where a leg comes out, where you can put this adapter in here, okay? This adapter comes in here, locks in, you screw it in. Okay, so you need one with a breakable leg like that. You don't break it literally, it just means it comes apart. This is called the universal adapter. This is in, out, okay? This little plastic thing it hooks right to this peg. And in fits, you know, various media. You can put anything in there for the purpose of drawing circles, okay? Let me get it out roughly about the same length as uh, this right here. As long as it fits in the hole, you know, you're good to go. Um, Okay, now let's see. I'm trying to figure out where I put that hole. Oops, I didn't screw my universal adapter in tight enough. I'll get that back in. I forgot to screw this uh, little stem. Tighten that stem back in there. Okay, all set. Right, now where's that hole again? Okay. I did a little bit of planning on this one. That's roughly, um, this is, f uh, how much is this? Five and a half inches across like this, so this is about two and three quarters inch. A lot of times I like to create kind of a relationship um, to the side of the, you know, the paper, all right? And, Let's see, I tell you what, I'll go I'll put this little white line. I'm trying to think if I wanted to go in front of that plan or in back of it. Why don't we do this? I'll put it in front over the top of that branch. And I'll go up to the hand, almost like the hand's coming in in front of it. And I'll come down here. Uh, by the way, I didn't mention it, but what I have in my hand is the white gel pen and the compass. Okay, and I've made this circle, and you can see it kind of goes right to the edge of the card stock. You don't have to measure everything off perfectly. Uh, I just did a little bit of planning there, 
and it would kind of create this relationship with the moon and the, uh, the actual dimensions of the paper. Okay, now let me see where I can find brain face. Um, and down here, what I did was I measured off the uh, the rest of the space um, between the bottom of this circle and the bottom of this page and found the center of it. Actually, I didn't find the center of it very well. I didn't go down to the bottom of the page, but oh well. Okay. So. Sorry, my hand's in the way. There's no other way around it with this compass. Okay, so what I've done is I've created these two circles right here. Okay. And that's with a white gel pen. The bottom one I wish it was a little bit thicker. Um, yeah, get that flowing a little bit more. Let me try to get a thicker line. Okay, a little bit. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if I want to go with another circle somewhere in here. Maybe not. Okay, so that was... That's a pilot shoes. All right, let me go with another white pen for embellishments now. I mean, that line was an embellishment too, but... And let's see, why don't I do this? I'll create some highlights, okay. All right, this is where I always start working off the page was when I zoom in. It's hard for people to see sometimes, okay. I can see some cloud formations right in this area. And at, on the tops of those clouds, I'll put a few little dots, okay. Cluster them in some areas a little bit more in the darker areas, in that green area, darker green, I won't put as many. Okay, and see I'm kind of working a small little area right here. And let's just keep working around. And what we're doing is, kind of we're reiterating the direction of light. In this case, it's a, I don't know, in most of the scenes, it's a center light. Now on the bottom of these clouds, because now this, you know, the light is coming from underneath these clouds, the, these clouds will have the highlighting on the bottom side of them. All right. Okay, keep going. I have a stack of pads here that is kind of rattling around, rocking. Okay, this is just the highlighting portion. Circle can do things, do a lot of things uh, visually. It can also represent things. I'm starting to think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a lot of those little highlighted dots within the circles. And it kind of, I see it as being somewhat of a a circle in science, you know, when you're inspecting something, maybe it's something akin to like a microscope. So we've kind of created a, 
you know, this different visual um, vehicle, I guess, that can represent something uh, visually and compositionally. Um, I did it to create a relationship between the objects and the edge of the page. Um, but uh, kind of uh, as far as meaning, maybe it's uh, taking a look at something, studying it, you know, the, kind of the scientific method uh, that we've all done, looking through microscopes. Now, outside of the uh, area, maybe these um, little uh, leaves and branches can be capturing some of that light. And where am I putting that light? I'm putting it, you know, roughly about on the side of the object facing the light, okay? So what it's doing is it's saying, you know, light is coming from a certain direction, so it's a reiteration of what we've kind of established. Um, I think it looks fine without the highlights as well, but when you put that highlight on there, uh, there's a little bit more dimension to that object. You're saying that, you know, it's it's reflective and it's of the world that is this scene, okay? In terms of its, uh, you know, responding to uh, light hitting it. You know, by simply reflecting it back. Okay, and we have these branches up here. And let's do it like we did the clouds. We'll bottom light them a little bit. Okay, now if you put the, you know, highlights on the wrong side of a leaf, you know, it's not any big deal. Uh, lighting is just wherever it ends up going, that's where it's supposed to go, you know. Okay, starting to come to life a little bit. Here's this circle kind of going around. A lot of times what I used to like to do, it's so thin that a lot of times what I like to do is I like to put a few little dots onto it, almost like it's kind of capturing that light as well. It's like dew on a spider web or something like that too. something very delicate, um, you know, to us, to a spider, you know, it's one of the strongest uh, materials, but, you know, visually here it's, it's fairly delicate, so. Doing the same thing on this bottom one. Lights here and there on the face. Oops. So the brain form. Maybe uh, highlights. Kind of electrical. Impulse. 
impulses. Electrical signals going through the brain. Here's the figure learns. Okay. Back out here a little bit. You can kind of see a little bit more. It's kind of light in here, so you can't, uh, in this circle, what I'm talking about, you can't really see these dots too much, but I'm going to add it in there anyway. Okay, now, okay, let me zoom back in. I, I just remembered I found a good working gold pen. I, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but sometimes little golden highlights here and there. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to see that reflective quality of these, but sometimes it's fun to kind of, especially like a warm scene, like a beautiful golden light lit scene. This gold pen really it looks great in that type of thing. But this is one of those little details that, you know, it's very, very subtle. So it's one of those that if you gave a card to someone or someone saw this and they kind of held it in the light a little bit, you know, they might be able to see that little gold uh, metallic uh, coloring kind of, you know, shimmering back at them. It's one of those fine little details. I was looking at this head down here. I, I think pen going. Um, I think I'm gonna do something. I think I'm gonna have a, another concentric circle in here. see that at all and maybe do one more I have that plant kind of going in front of these circles on this figure um, and here it's in the back of that one so just for a little bit of variation okay I need to scrape off a bit of that Okay, so we have this face here with these concentric circles. They're very fine. I don't know if you can see those in there, here. But there's the highlights. Okay, and last but not least, let's add a few little finishing touches on this. Um, this would be a perfect place to uh, to use some of the white uh, pigmenting just to kind of soften up and uh, to create a, a glowing um, area in the uh, center of the card. And to soften I mean, there's so much cloud form in here. And I might have some of these flying objects receiving some of the light yeah. and illuminating their wings. This butterfly right here can be a bit bottom lit, you know. I don't like that moon. That moon, kind of, the impression of it stands out to me a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into it a little bit and put it in a bit of, kind of atmosphere. Get an atmosphere. 
spirit touch by diffusing some of the lines around it. Maybe this finger right here and thumb could be getting illuminated a little bit uh, by that light. See that? Yeah, a little bit of ink down there. See that little area down here on that palm? Let's do the same thing. Let's put a little bit of light in that area. Kind of, it turns the object in space a little bit by having that little diffusion right there. See that? It's, well, I think it can. I think it can even take a little bit more. Let's try to add some more in there. So you see that hand now. Some of these leaves. I'm going to turn the uh, leaves in space a little bit. Okay, there, there's a little bit of a diffusion right there. It's really easy to go crazy with this stuff, so, and I don't know, I guess sometimes I probably do, but if you ever add too much, just kind of, you know, take a dry, you know, cotton swab or just your finger and just kind of remove some of that ink, and it'll come right off. It, uh, it's not gonna, now this is a color box, uh, frost white. If you put like a brilliance pad or something like that that's known for drying very quickly that might be harder to remove so kind of the slower drying um, pigment inks like a color box is you know in my opinion the ideal type okay enough of that and let's go for a few bold marks in here with uh, some larger dots. It's almost like we're looking into a a window into a different uh, dimension or, or galaxy.
Okay. Let's see. Little glowing little dots of light here and there. And I think there you have it. Ah, we'll think of a title for it, but anyways, um, scenes aren't always about lakes and mountains and rivers. I see this as being kind of a, a scene, kind of a different one still following the same concept so that I typically do in other scenes this is another scene that I did using similar uh, imagery but what do you see here we see kind of a light area um, separated by a darker area and illumination down in here we have these clouds up here we have a uh, foreground in a dark tone. In this case it's kind of up here in the corners as well. But the, you know, the darkness is right here. Kind of some kind of subject matter down here. But uh, it's all kind of the same concept. I mean this one's a different color scheme, but you have these little glowing areas of light. Okay. And just a different take on, uh, you know, a uh, scene. Anyways, uh, fun with the compass again. It's called a bow compass. Find one with a breakable leg and a universal adapter. Um, I saw that they had this universal adapter still online. Okay, it's only like $4, and I've had this one for probably 30 years. And... You know, it still looks brand new to me. It's never, it's never failed me. But the compass itself, probably you can, might be able to find one for twelve dollars, fifteen dollars, or something like that. But these two pens are really formidable. I mean, you can really put a lot of different things on there. You know, just the ability to, to draw circles with you know whatever media you're working in. Something like a big fat alcohol based pen won't work, but a thinner one would. This is a Marvy pen brush marker. Fairly thick marker, but you know, it uh, I just did it earlier. And it fits right in there. Okay. So it's a fun tool and uh, I don't know. If someone feels inclined, I would definitely recommend it. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the uh, scene.